Good morning. My name is Marcus Groner. I'm a senior scientist here at the R&D department at Forge Nano. And I'm here to talk to you about how to scale up particle ALD. And as you may have noticed, there's been a lot of exciting news in the Colorado ALD community, where we now have three local ALD companies under one roof at Forge Nano in, on the outskirts of Denver. And we're all very excited to be able to working with each other and joining forces and resources to do um, all kinds of ALD and um, provide all kinds of equipment, including semiconductor equipment now. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the process we go through when we wanna take an exciting new ALD process or exciting new particle ALD application um, to coat powder and make better materials with it, which then it can be used to make exciting new improved products, including batteries and catalysts and many other applications that you've been hearing about all morning. So I'm going to talk really more about the process and the methods and the resources and the, the um, tricks we have to scale up particle ALD. And it's basically a four-step process um, where we first look into the, the, the standard ALD process development to validate a, a chemistry. Um, then we scale that to inert powders as the second step. Um, next is actually doing the particle ALD on the customer's powder substrate, typically on the order of uh, grams to kilograms, before we then go on to commercial production, typically on the tons kind of scale. So of course, this is the ideal process that we like to follow, but that's not always the case. Um, people always want shortcuts or, or they there might be a reason to, to skip a, a step in some cases. So to go from a promising new PAL, the application that's been reported in the literature, for example, to commercial production, um, this is where Forge Nano comes in. And of course, we do the standard ALD process development and investigation into precursors and, and all those kinds of things that everybody is probably familiar with here. But more importantly, we are very focused on, on how to apply these new processes to the customer's substrates and make it work for their application. And that's where, where um, substrate compatibility limitations may come into play. Uh, we have to think about cost, timeline, and more important, the customer's own testing. So when we scale ALD um, to, to large batches of powder, um, we of course have to consider powder behavior. Um, the precursor amounts that we use are much, much higher orders of magnitude, higher than for wafer ALD. So we have to consider that and, and there's multiple tools we can pick from to scale the process to particles. Um, of course, we have the standard types of analytical techniques that you might think of for ALD, including some in situ monitoring, um, lots of, of particle ALD characterization, and of course, we care a lot about reproducibility since that's important for, for industrial scaling. Um, at the very large scale, the batch versus continuous ALD processing options have to be considered. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. And of course, powder handling of large volumes of powder become very important. And even more important is actually to consider what kinds of processes the industry is used to working with or are willing to accept to introduce into their, into their chain. So that comes into play as well. 
So going back to the, the PLV scaling process, the four-step process that I want to talk about. Uh, the first step is just doing the standard ALD development on, on silicon wafers, on QCM, or we can look at the mass gain uh, while we run TMA water, for example, in a standard um, ALD tool where we look at temperature and growth rates and the cell flaming nature. And also we have we often want to consider multiple different precursors for a certain process to give us options down the road. ALD on silicon wafers can be done um, very fast in the new tools that we are now, now selling uh, in collaboration with Sundu. Um, the, these uh, ultra-fast wafer tools are on the order of one cycle per second, and Dane will be talking about this new ALD to the X presentation tomorrow in the Tuesday AM session. And of course, we have standard analytical techniques to look at thin films on wafers. Now, the main purpose of this is not to, to um, necessarily publish a paper or, or uh, explore the chemistry in detail, but rather to kind of get a down selection of the process conditions find that we might then want to use for the subsequent particle ALD scale up. So um, step two is transferring this ALD knowledge to particles. And we typically use inert powder substrates um, in a small fluidized bed tool. Um, that's a nice tool for this kind of work. It allows us to do in situ RGA monitoring of the gases that come out of the exhaust at the top of the, the fluid bed tool and do all kinds of chemistry studies and, and make sure that the ALD coding is going, going down as expected. Precursor delivery becomes a big deal once we scale to particles because we can have orders of magnitude more surface area than for typical um, object coding type ALD tools. So vapor pressure and long-term stability at high, at high temperatures is important for the, for the precursors that we're considering. And of course, uh, for the QC, the primary uh, tool here is elemental analysis using ICP. We can, we can also compare the calculated amount of, of the deposition deposited materials to the actual and we also look at surface area, moisture, and sometimes other things like powder flow or, or imaging the, the, the particles and so on. So really the main question we're trying to answer here is, does the ALD process translate well to doing ALD on pa particles? Um, certain non-ideal -AL ALD behavior may be okay if you're running wafers, but sometimes these issues really show up when you try to do them on particles, and, and sometimes vice versa as well. For example, uh, TiO2 ALD tends to work quite nicely on wafers with tick lung water, but we found it not to be very amenable to, to particle ALD processing, just, just as an example. So we'll talk here a little bit more about fluidization of, of particle beds. Um, since, since we're primarily using the fluid bed tool at this stage of the process, it's, it's really nice way of processing particles. Um, it's kind of a, a commercial processing tool that we apply to particle ALD and run at low pressures. And it really has nice mixing, um, solid gas mixing, great heat transfer, so it's easy to heat the powder uniformly. And we can characterize the, 
fluidization behavior of the powder by, by graphing the pressure drop versus the gas flow to get our fluidization curve, as shown on the right here. And basically, as soon as you hit the minimum fluidization gas flow velocity, um, the powder starts behaving like a liquid. The bed expands, and uh, if you add more gas beyond that, then you get um, bubbling fluidization, which is probably what you're seeing here on the right. Uh, we're operating above the minimum fluidization, and that's usually okay. And fluidization is a whole science and also somewhat of an art, I would say, with lots of, of tricks that we're going to talk a little bit about later. And of course, uh, not all substrates behave quite like this carbon over here does. So next I'm going to talk about the wonderful things we can do when we combine a mass spec with a fluidized bed reactor ALD tool. So we're looking at the exhaust gases that are coming out of the top of the fluidized bed. And we can tell all kinds of things about the, the chemistry and the processing going on in that fluidized bed, uh, starting with substrate dyeing and outgassing. That happens when you first start heating up and pumping down the, the particles. Then, of course, there's the uh, ALD mechanisms that you can figure out by looking at the various species that are generated when you do the ALD. Um, and then even more importantly, perhaps, is that we can detect when an ALD reaction has saturated. That works especially well for, for fast ALD reactions. So on the right here, you can see that when you start TMA dose, you first all you see is uh, the methane signal in red. And then after seconds, minutes, hours, that methane signal start to, starts to decrease as the surface is becoming saturated. And you see a rapid rise in the, the TMA signal. And that tells you that the ALD reaction has saturated. And then you can move on to the purge and then the, the water dose, which does pretty much exactly the same thing. At first, all you see is the methane product. And then when all of the surfaces in the bed have been coated, you get the uh, water breakthrough. And the nice thing about all this is that you can even automate the process with, uh, with, with software and, and run hundreds of cycles of a process like this. And, and more importantly, perhaps for, for scale up, is that we have very high precursor usage. Um, we can easily achieve greater than 90% um, precursor utilization in a lot of these processes with the mass spec. And that's very important when you're going through tens or hundreds or even kilos of a certain precursor doing a run. OK, so once we get the ALD process working well on an inert substrate, we go to the third step, which is dealing with the particles that the customer has provided for their application. And that's where we run into challenges with powder handling and fluidization sometimes, um, including agglomeration and elutriation and, and all kinds of things that can happen. And for example, on the right here, we have what looks almost like a paste. Fortunately, when we started processing this material in the fluid bed, it actually started um, fluidizing quite nicely. Um, so sometimes all it takes is, is drying of the substrate. Another issue that arises that is that the ALD precursors sometimes can interact um, with the bulk of the powder rather than just with the surface. And that's that's often a challenging situation that you can perhaps get around by using different precursors or, or doing different things during the nucleation phase of the process. 
And of course, some powders have very high porosity temperature limitations, or they have uh, inert loading requirements or certain safety issues to deal with as well. We also have different types of particle ALD coating tools. At the small scale, we use not only the fluidized bed, but also the rotating drum. Both of these can be done at grams to kilograms types of scales. And just to give you a brief introduction of, of rotary mixers, blenders, whatever you want to call them, reactors, the, the powder is basically cascading in a rotating drum. And this allows you to do static dosing. You don't have to constantly uh, fluidize the powder with, with gas flow. And it's also very useful if you want to do high surface, very high surface area porous powders or perhaps slow ALD processes. And here, instead of looking at fluidization as shown previously, you're now dealing with powder tumbling around in a drum that can that can assume many types of forms. Most of these work for, for doing particle ALD processing, um, but of course you don't want the powder sticking to the walls. As far as analysis of these powders, um, really more the more important part of this is now application testing by the customer. And the question often arises as to, does it matter if it's really good conformal ALD where you don't agglomerate any particles together? And the answer is kind of a yes and no. Um, even if the customer doesn't care or the application isn't impacted by, by agglomeration, for example, um, it's very useful to maintain good ALD processing because when you have nice conformal uh, self-limiting ALD, it really helps with reproducibility. And that's one of the main reasons to, to keep striving for doing proper ALD, even when it might not matter in some sense. So the next thing to talk about is how to deal with difficult powders. So for example, on, in the middle here, we show um, slugging behavior that happens with particularly sticky powders. And that can be seen if you just put flour into a fluidized bed, for example. And uh, there's different ways of dealing with that. Oftentimes just drying the material or doing some sort of pretreatment can, can solve the fluidization challenges. We also have various fluidization aids on our various tools, including um, vibrating the whole, the whole bed, um, impacting microjets, and even stirrers. And the other thing is that oftentimes fluidization changes as you introduce the different ALD precursors. So on the, on the far right here, we have phosphor stuck inside a rotary drum. And we were discouraged about our ability to, being, to be able to process this until we hit it with the first TMA dose. And over the course of this dose, uh, this, this powder that was completely stuck to the, the walls and turned into a nicely rolling powder and we were able to, to process this material. And as I mentioned earlier, we have multiple reactor geometries that, that work better or worse with various um, powders. Not just the fluid bed and the rotating bed, but also occasionally it, it, it's actually okay to do a packed bed coating. And of course, we're gonna talk about ALD when we, spatial ALD when we do talk about scale up. The other thing to consider is that we have to dose hundreds of grams of precursors sometimes just to do one ALD coating run um, on, a, on a kilo of, of nanopowders, for example. So 
Of course, gases tend to be easy to dose, but liquids and solids are, are, are more challenging, as are certain precursors like ozone with a limited lifetime. So we can do direct dosing of precursors. We can use um, precursors heated in bubblers. We've developed a liquid injection technique, and we've also dissolved precursors. And sometimes you can also generate precursors in situ. And there's different ways of, of doing the dosing. You can either have in situ feedback control, as with the mass spec, or sometimes for a well-established process, you can just uh, dose a predetermined quantity of precursor each, for each cycle. And how you quantify the amount of precursor you've introduced is also a bit of a challenge and has different um, solutions, including flow metering and even gravimetric measurements. So next we're going to... So here are the two lab scale particle ALD systems we have for sale. Prometheus is kind of a fully featured um, coding development tool that has um, powder volumes anywhere from about 10 milliliters to a liter. It allows high temperature processing, um, bubblers with precursors that can be heated to 150, 200 C. Um, you can do ozone ALD processing. And of course the RGA is, is the very useful process development tool. And furthermore, this one allows inert loading and unloading of your substrate. The Pandora rotary tool is a kind of lower cost, simpler to operate tool in some ways. Typically, we use it for smaller powder volumes down to, to a milliliter. Um, you can also do code things that don't necessarily fluidize that well in a fluid bed, such as extrudates for, for catalysis or uh, even small objects. And it also allows you to do static dosing since you no longer need uh, fluidizing gas to fluidize the powder. So that's useful for very high aspect ratio um, structures, for example. And the really nice thing about this tool is that the viewport allows you to see the, the powder inside as it's tumbling around and you can make sure that it's processing well and, and change the dosing conditions if necessary to, to deal with that. It also has options like the RGA, which of course I highly recommend. Uh, you can even put a QCM in there and there's a GMP compatible versions of this tool as well. And finally, we have step four in our process where we go to industrial scale particle ALD. Depending on your application, that might mean tons per year, tons per day, or even tons per hour of particles being coded. And the nice thing is we have lots of options. Um, for, a, for batch ALD, you can scale up your fluid bed to, to quite large sizes if you wanted to. But we also offer a large rotary blender tool, Lethos. Um, this is a small prototype version of it on the right that we have running right now. And we're doing some, um, actually some, some rocket fuel development basically in this tool. And there are larger drums available for that. We also have continuous and semi-continuous particle LD processing options, which I'll show on the next slide. And deciding between the different types of tools is often a question of LD film thickness and the, the surface area powder, as well as, of course, um, precursor properties and delivery and, and cost. But oftentimes uh, what people look at is, is the cost of the process. Is it dominated by the capital cost? We, we use commercial 
powder handling equipment of various types to, to convey the powder into and out of the reactor. Um, so that's usually not that extravagant, but precursor costs can become quite um, important if you have a thick ALD film or a very high surface area powders. And at other times, operating costs, such as time and labor and utilities, especially the heating and cooling of the powder, can be the dominant driver. And, and like I said, it really varies from application to application. And your, your added cost for coating you know, a kilo of powder might be cents, cents per kilo, or it might be dollars per kilo, or even, even higher, depending. It just really depends on, on the factors involved here. Also, when you're doing industrial processing of powders, things like safety, the reproducibility of the process, and various regulations come into play and may also affect it affect the type of tool that you choose. Um, most importantly, the industry itself often determines what type of processing tool is most appropriate based on how it, how it fits into their existing processing line. Finally, I want to show you spatial particle ALD. So this is basically taking the, the spatial ALD kind of methods that you may have seen on wafers and, and translating them to powder. So we can actually drop batches of powder through zones of precursor and purges. And this pod system over on the right, um, and do multiple ALD cycles like that by, by building multiple pods. And this other tool here, Circe, is a continuous ALD process that is almost like a, a roll to roll tool for, for powder, in that powder is continuously moving through different zones of purging and precursor A and precursor B. And both of these um, have been shown to produce powder on the tons per day and even tons per hour type of rate, especially if you're only looking for a few ALD cycles, which is often the case for, for, for battery applications that we are heavily involved with. So again, this, this is showing the diagrams of the three different large scale powder processing tools. Um, since the previous pictures may not have been as clear. For more information on, on this kind of processing, definitely take a look at James James's talk from last year that's in the PLD Summit video library. And finally, to summarize, I hope I've shown you how Forge Nano can provide that phase two in the um, South Park, Colorado meme for the gnomes who, in this case, know how to collect ALD coated powder, but don't quite know how that's going to be commercializable. And I'm Marcus Groner. I'd be happy to answer questions now or online or hopefully see you in the future in our new location here at uh, Thornton, Colorado, or at some other conference. Thank you.